Hi, the review fella here. Thank you so much for stopping by. So the LG C2 is here and it looks incredible. With a faster Alpha 9 Generation 5 processor and a boost in peak brightness, it's on course to be one of the best TVs of 2022 for movies and gaming. HDR content is breathtakingly vibrant with incredible colour saturation, impressive contrast and the blackest of blacks. Gaming is a joy with colours of pop and a lightning fast response time. This TV brings games to life like nothing else I've ever seen. The C1 was good, the C2 is better. The bump in peak brightness is also noticeable. So to get the best out of the C2 and the G2, I set out to find the best picture settings possible. I know which presets are the most accurate, so I wanted to tweak my TV to give a pleasing balance between accuracy and what I feel looks the best. These settings should work well for the G2 also, as the C2 and G2 share the same panel technology and the same web OS version. We'll look at SDR, HD, HDR, Dolby Vision and gaming. So let's first look at SDR content. This is usually the content you watch via your cable or satellite TV box for your day-to-day -day TV viewing. Most often it comes in via your HDMI 1 port, if that's how you have it set up. All I've done here is turned my cable TV box on and paused the content so it's not distracting. I've brought up the settings menu by pressing the button on the remote with the cog icon. Then go to all settings, then to support. There's a couple of essential things I do before anything else. Choose software update. I'd recommend you turn on auto update on. This will ensure that bug fixes and feature enhancements are downloaded and installed automatically. Also press check for updates to make sure you're running the latest software version from day one. Now go back to the left menu and select general. Select OLED care, then device self care. Now onto energy saving. Make sure energy saving step is turned off. LG OLEDs do not have the kind of peak brightness that a Samsung QLED does for example, so you do not want to dim the TV with energy saving modes based on ambient light levels, so turn this off. Now a step back and OLED panel care. Then to pixel cleaning. You can choose to manually clean the pixels or the cycle will run itself after a set amount of hours of use. It's recommended to leave the TV in standby mode as a process cannot run when the TV is powered off or when the screen is turned on. Turning the screen on during the cleaning cycle will also end the cleaning process. Taking a step back, I turn screen move on. This will occasionally move the image to help reduce the chance of image retention. This is a screen protection feature and it's very subtle. You won't notice it. I have adjust logo brightness set to low. Again, this is a screen protection feature that I recommend you use. We want our panel to last a long time. And I just leave care recommendations set to on. Now go back to the left hand menu and select picture. You now have a list of presets. You can choose whichever one of these you prefer. I can tell you that the most accurate out of the box is filmmaker mode with a color temperature of warm 50. In fact, if you had your TV calibrated, this is most likely the preset it would be calibrated to. Filmmaker mode is designed so that you experience movies and TV shows just how the creator intended them to be. It does this by disabling all post-processing, also by preserving the correct aspect ratios, colors and frame rates. However, for SDR content, I don't prefer it. I find it too dark, so I would suggest one of the expert modes. Expert Dark Space Night is ideal if you have a very dark room, a basement for example, where no natural sunlight will stream through. However, I prefer Expert Bright Space Daytime. It gives a bright and accurate picture and is ideal when you have mixed lighting. During nighttime viewing and daytime viewing, for example, when natural light enters a room through windows. If you don't like any of these modes, you can always try standard, which may be a bit brighter. Now go back a step and go to advanced settings, and then to brightness. Set the OLED pixel brightness to your desired brightness level. As OLED TVs don't have the peak brightness of other TVs, as previously mentioned, I like to set this high to 95. I set contrast to 85, black level I leave at 50. Auto dynamic contrast controls how the contrast changes, depending on the content being displayed. It's a matter of taste and you can always experiment with it. I prefer this set to off. Peak brightness I set to high as I want to squeeze as much brightness out of the panel as I can. I have gamma set at 2.2. If you had your TV calibrated, this is most likely the gamma that would be chosen. BT1886 is recommended by the ITU. You can try it and see which you prefer. But I find 2.2 to be the most accurate and pleasing. Video range is left at auto. Motion eye care is set to off. This is another energy saving feature that will dim your TV panel if turned on. Now, if we go back a step and go to color, color depth and tint I leave as they are. I set color gamut to auto detect. This will attempt to match the color gamut to the content. Now choose white balance setting from this menu. 
I'll leave all this as default except colour temperature. The most accurate colour temperature is warm 50, however I prefer warm 30, and you can use this option to warm up and cool down the picture to your preference, but warm 30 is mine. Take a step back and everything under clarity I've left as default. True Motion has been auto set to user selection. True Motion is Algae's motion smoothing technology. I just leave this as it is here, I've had no issues with it. But if you have any issues with motion smoothing, this is where you can tweak it or turn it off. Now back to the left hand menu and sound. I have sound set to standard, I find the C2 has great sound. And all these advanced settings I just leave as default. Now back to general in the left hand menu and to AI service. I leave all this as default. But I make sure AI brightness settings and AI genre selection are turned off. I don't want the image altered based on ambient light or scene type. Taking a step back, if you have a gaming console, then select Game Optimizer. Just ignore this bit if you're not a gamer. Turn Game Optimizer on, and this will enable all game related settings when you next start your console, as long as it's connected via one of the HDMI ports. We'll cover this in more detail shortly. For HD content that you might stream via Amazon or Netflix for example, I just leave all these settings as they are, so the same settings as SDR content. I don't change anything else here. Next I'll cover HDR content, but not Dolby Vision yet, which I'll cover in a moment. I'm streaming a HDR title from Amazon Prime. This puts the TV in HDR mode. I've paused the content so it's not distracting. Apologies that my camera is blowing out the highlights somewhat here. The image looks perfect off camera. We know we're in HDR mode as we have different picture settings. Again, filmmaker mode is going to be one of the most accurate and you can try this if you wish. Cinema is fairly accurate too, but I prefer similar home as it's a bit brighter. If you don't like any of these, then you could try standard. If we take a step back and go to advanced settings and then to brightness, all these settings are left as default. Pixel brightness, contrast and peak brightness have all been pushed up to their maximum to compensate for the darker nature of HDR content. And I'll leave these as they are. Gamma is greyed out, so ignore that. Motion eye care is off. Going back a step and then to color, I leave all this as default. Color gamut I set to auto detect so that the correct gamut is chosen for the content. Select white balance from this menu and again I prefer warm 30, although warm 50 is more accurate, so set this to your preference. Everything under clarity is left as default. Note that true motion has been auto set to cinematic movement. This attempts to smooth out fast moving cinematic content that is most often shot at 24 frames per second. I think it works fairly well, but you can always turn it off if you don't like the effect, or if you have any issues with HDR motion smoothing. Going back to general, then to AI service, all this is left as default and I make sure AI brightness settings and AI genre selection are turned off. Back to sound, I just leave all this set as default. Now on to Dolby Vision content. I've streamed a title from Apple TV and paused it. You can do this with Netflix too. This has put the TV in Dolby Vision select mode. Cinema is going to be the most accurate, but again I prefer Cinema Home. It has a small brightness boost. You can always try standard if you don't like any of these presets. If we go back then to advanced settings, now to brightness, all this is left as default and you'll notice again that pixel brightness, contrast and peak brightness have been pushed to maximum to counter the darker nature of Dolby Vision content. Gamma is again greyed out and motion eye care is left off. Taking a step back then onto colour, all this is left as default. Go to white balance from this menu and again I've set the temperature to warm 30. Go back some steps and everything under clarity is left as default. And true motion again is auto set to cinematic movement to attempt to smooth out the motion of 24 frames per second content, which is the frame rate of most movies. Again tweak it or turn it off if you have any motion smoothing issues. Now back to general and AI service. AI brightness settings and AI genre selection are off. Sound is left as standard and all advanced settings are left as default. Now onto gaming. If you have a gaming console such as the PlayStation or Xbox then you now have yourself a fantastic gaming TV. Earlier if you remember we turned on the game optimizer. All the settings are left as default. So here I've turned on my PS5 and if we look at the picture settings we can see we are now in HDR select mode game optimizer. If we exit out of the main menu and press the button on the remote with the cog icon it will open additional game optimizer options. It's very similar to last year's C1 and you can tweak this to suit the game you're playing. If we go into settings and game genre we have various options with a new sports setting available. However for the best experience all round I'd leave this set to standard. It seems the most accurate. There is also a darkroom mode which may help with eye strain. I wouldn't recommend it though unless you're playing in a pitch black room and you like it. I have this feature 
feature turned off. AI game sound is usually on by default. I've had some mixed experiences with this and actually prefer it off, otherwise I find some subtle in-game sounds can be lost. Under the picture option, then wide aspect ratio, more aspect ratios are added if supported. There is also a multi-view mode for side-by-side -side or picture-in-picture -picture viewing, but it doesn't seem well supported at the moment. I think future firmware updates will bring more options to this. So there you have it. If you made it this far, then thank you. I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. So what do you think of these settings? Do you have the C2 or the G2? Or are you thinking of buying one of them? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. It would be great to hear from you. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you did, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. It's a big help to my small channel if you could do that for me, please. Also, please consider subscribing for more TV and tech videos. There's plenty more good stuff on the C2 and G2 to come. Thank you once again. Please stay safe and I hope to see you soon.